No, no, Mr. Space President. It was really no trouble to travel to the farthest reaches of the galaxy to fight off evil hordes of space mutants. All in the name of peace and justice. And looking good while doing it. That's just the kind of guy I am. So you say hi to the wife and kids for me, all right? All right, you take care. Ugh. Well, I can finally cross a couple more things off my list. Huh, I didn't realize saving the universe would take so long. Well, looks like I'm off the hook for that. Ow! Okay, okay, fine. What we got? No. No! I won't! No! No, actually that seems like fun. Yeah, let's do that. Hey there strangers, and welcome to another review! Today we're celebrating Christmas! In January! Because I can't plan a schedule to save my life. So, I thought it would be fun to take a look at a Christmas-themed game, but seeing as those are really few and far between and kind of hard to find, I'm taking a look at the only one I actually own and have access to. Duke Nukem, Nuclear Winter. So, put on your Christmas-themed hats and get yourself some eggnog, because for the next few minutes, it's Christmas! That is one crappy-looking snow effect. Is that really the best I can do? Now, I'm sure that most people who know what a video game is have at least heard of Duke Nukem even if it was only from the not-so-well-received Duke Nukem Forever back in 2011. Which really wasn't as bad as people make it out to be, but I'll get into that another time. The important thing is that Duke Nukem 3D was released by 3D Realms back in January 1996, and since has appeared on numerous lists of the most important video games of all time, and along with games like Doom and Castle Wolfenstein helped to define and popularize the genre of the first-person shooter. At the time, Duke 3D in particular came under much scrutiny and was simultaneously booed and praised due to its violence and sexual themes. The narrative's not exactly a literary masterpiece, and the themes are pretty tame by today's standards, but it was a relevant stepping stone back in the day. I mean, just look at those pixels! And this is the sort of game I used to play when I was a kid. I wonder if that had any lasting consequences. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's fine. Anyway, it cuts two years later in a completely different developer, and we end up with this! Rather interesting choice of Christmas-themed Duke Nukem game. However, seeing as this thing is absolutely ancient by computer standards, I couldn't possibly hope to get it to run on my system without some sort of digital wizardry. So we're going to be taking a look at the recently released Steam version! Wait, Steam doesn't come on a disc. And for that matter, neither does Dusty Revenge. Where do I keep getting these? Anyway... Why don't we go ahead and take a look at Duke Nukem's Christmas-flavored outing and just see how it compares to the original. First off, I have to say I absolutely love this title screen. Yeah, I know it's kind of strange to praise a menu, but just look at it! It's basically the same opening screen as the original Duke Nukem 3D, but it's all Christmassy themed and the music is just awesome! So our story begins with- UGH! Wh what is that? Get it away! UGH! This terrifying bit of 90 CG is our narrator. He begins by telling us how this is the story of how Duke Nukem saved Christmas. Meaning that all the events of the game have already happened. So much for any suspense there, game. He tells us that Duke received a telegram from the North Pole. People still use telegrams in the 90s? And it turns out that Santa Claus himself has been kidnapped by the same aliens that Duke fought off not too long ago, with the aid of the feminist elven militia. I'm not entirely sure what I'm supposed to read from that. Anyway, by brainwashing Santa, they hope to conquer the world! Somehow. I'm not really sure how that's supposed to work. But the most important thing is it's up to the one and only Duke Nukem to save Christmas. Oh yeah, I've got a good feeling about this one. The game starts off basic enough, maybe a little too much so, as Duke Nukem for some reason finds himself in a small, bland wooden room, which after about a dozen steps drops down to the backstage of a strip club, which seems to be infested by aliens. Ah, uh, the age-old combination of Christmas, aliens, and strippers. They go together like peanut butter and radiation poisoning. Already off to a great start. I'm not really sure what Duke was doing just hanging out in the attic of this strip club, or how the elves or the postman knew to send a telegram here, or how the entire city was overrun by aliens without him even noticing. But what the heck, we've got Duke Nukem an excuse to shoot hordes of aliens. What else more could you want? 
So right off the bat, anyone who's even the slightest bit familiar with Duke Nukem might feel something oddly familiar about this game. Something familiar, but what is it? I can't quite put my finger on it. It might be the fact that this is the second level from the original Duke Nukem 3D. Just in reverse, and aptly named Deja Vu. Haha. -ha. And I don't mean it's a recreation of the level from the first game, I mean it's the exact same level with some texture work to give it a wonderful snowy atmosphere. Like for instance, this wonderfully, totally not properly themed calendar of two women in bikinis on a sunny beach. But hey, at least it's a December calendar, I think. I can't really read that, it's really blurry. December... wait, 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 wait a minute. The original Duke Nukem 3D was set to take place in the early 21st century, meaning that all the events that transpired in it should probably have passed by now. Seems like I probably would have remembered that. But this calendar clearly says the year 3007. But the narrator says that this game only takes place a couple of months after the original Duke Nukem 3D. But then how is this a thousand years? And then... Uh, uh... You created a time paradox. But despite the distortion of space and time, the layout is mostly unchanged. Other than the removal of this excessively complicated door and elevator system being replaced with the secret toilet elevator that only works after you smash the toilet. But hey, at least they finally installed a kick-ass jacuzzi after a thousand years. Also, a flooded bathroom that's been unkept for over a thousand years. Lovely. By now, if you're familiar with the original Duke Nukem 3D, you've noticed some variations to the enemies. Almost all of which are simple palette swaps of pre-existing enemies. You have the return of basic enemies like the Assault Troopers, now with festive hats, and Pig Cops in Santa outfits. And then there are more interesting changes like the Flying Snowmen made from the Assault Commander, and the Snowmobile with machine guns made out of the Pig Cop tank. And if you can ignore the initial insanity of the sentient snowmen, every single one you see is apparently evil. Once again raising all sorts of questions about the- Ah! Oh, okay, okay, I'll ignore it, just don't make me look at it again! And in the second level, we're introduced to the new enemies of the game, the feminist elven militia. Also, I'm pretty sure some of them are dudes. I'm also pretty sure these are just a reskin of the Assault Enforcer. However, these enemies are special, because when you kill them, sometimes they'll drop presents. Which will contain a random weapon. Which is kinda cool. I also can't help but find it amusing that pressing F1 actually gives you the story of the original Duke 3D instead of the one in this expansion. And if you decide to abuse the all-powerful old-timey cheat codes... Be careful, or like me, you'll end up trying to skip ahead to the North Pole in order to get some footage for your review, and end up on death row. With Santa pulling the switch? Santa! Santa, I wasn't that bad, was I? Wait, wait, there's a second Santa? Why is this wonderful dude so incredibly painful? What are you waiting for, Christmas? So after you fight your way back to the original entrance of the level and hop your way back up, you get another dose of deja vu, as you end up right back at the end of the first level. And it's here that it's really apparent that these levels were never meant to be played backwards. You'll find that you can't enter the building where you did in the original game because someone decided to install a keycard reader in the last thousand years. But that's okay, there's an obvious breakable entrance around the other side. Hopefully, though, you thought to jump across this gap to get into this room to pick up these pipe bombs, because there's no way back up. But then again, even if you did, it's completely pointless because this side is blocked by the exact same keycard. Not really sure why they bothered putting that destructible wall there. Hopefully you played the original game enough and knew of this secret room that could only be accessed by jumping on a conveniently placed crate, and get curious enough to see if you could leap six feet into the air and balance atop of this street sign. At least in the last thousand years, somebody thought to replace the cool secret rocket launcher that was sitting up here, though I'm not really sure why they took the time to remove the cool raising platform and just kind of lazily slapped it down atop of this ledge. But now that you're up here, luckily you can phase through this solid pane of glass, but only this pane of glass, because all the other ones are reinforced with wood. Which, as we know, is Duke Nukem's only weakness. Even though at the very beginning of this level, there's an example of wood that you can shoot through with bullets. And while this window is exactly the same as it was in the original game, at least there it was an easter egg, and this one it's actually the way you're supposed to go. Which makes it just kind of... bad and lazy game design. But now that you're here, you can find the yellow key card that allows you access to those doors. But now that you're inside, you're blocked from going upstairs. Ah, but how about this secret entrance from the original game? Nope! This random secret closet is also blocked by a keycard reader. For some reason. And only from the inside. The only way left is to go up the elevator into the arcade to get the red keycard. Which you could have easily just walked in and taken earlier if these doors hadn't just conveniently jammed to keep you out. 
This allows you to gain entrance to the projection booth, where somehow turning on the projector unlocks the ticket counter downstairs, which apparently had a whole lot of monsters in it that you clearly could see weren't there earlier. It also allows you to finally see the movie that's been advertised over the last two levels and throughout the rest of the game. <laughs> Gotta be honest here, guys, this is probably the worst movie I've ever seen. But now that you've opened up the big screen, you can, and once again have to do something that was an optional secret from the first game. Blowing a hole through the big screen to activate a switch which opens up the chute that Duke fell down in the original game. And don't worry about how to get back up there, there's a conveniently placed jetpack right next to it allowing Duke to fly back up the chute to the beginning of Duke Nukem 3D. For some reason. Why Duke has to go all the way back through here, I have no idea. He really has no tie to this rooftop, other than it being the beginning of Duke Nukem 3D. And don't say he went up there to get his ship. The only reason he came down from here in the original game is because his ship was shot down and he had to eject. So anyway, after jetpacking back up through the chute, Duke ends up at... the North Pole? Wow, I always knew that Los Angeles was secretly thousands of miles north of where everyone else thinks it is, but who knew the North Pole was actually on top of this random, nondescript building? I'm learning so much today! But hey, we found Santa's house! That was quick! Santa! Santa, I'm here to save you! Santa! Wow, Santa really takes his security seriously, doesn't he? Just what was so important down here anyways that I had to get blown to smithereens for it? Canned food. Yeah, th that was worth dying for. So after passing this house that is apparently not Santa's and I have no idea why it's out in the middle of this frozen wasteland, we begin to wander through Santa's production and shipping facilities, his corporate headquarters, and even his home. What's in here anyway? Toys for rich kids. Toys for poor kids. Rich kids, poor kids. Rich kids. Ah! And admittedly, this is kind of cool. The kid inside me really enjoyed seeing where Santa lives and works, and getting to defend it from the vile hordes of space. Granted, I'm not really sure how Santa and his elves are supposed to traverse this area. It's really convoluted and really frickin' dangerous. But then I also didn't know that Santa had his own personal nuclear power plants. But then how else is he gonna power his force fields? You gotta be able to keep those hordes of rioting children at bay, you know? Not to mention... Crap. Son of a... This really... Okay, if there's one complaint I have about the level design in this game, it's the trollish placement of these trip mines. They're not overly common, but when they are around, they're just there to screw over people on their first playthrough of the game. I know they're meant to be booby traps and to catch you off guard, but for whatever reason, the laser they project to alert the player of their existence doesn't actually activate until you're within two steps of them, giving you no time to react. And this really wouldn't be nearly as bad if they were placed just one at a time, but no, there's entire walls of trip mines, making sure you have absolutely no chance of surviving the explosion. And then there's this one, that's strategically placed to be detonated by an item that just happens to be placed in front of it. So the instant you walk into the doorway, the entire room explodes without you having to do anything to trigger it. The only way to avoid this is to quickly run into the room and back out again, or to throw something like a pipe bomb in there, both of which you would have no reason to do unless you'd already been tricked by this once before. And speaking of level design choices, they're not quite up to snuff when compared to the original. Which I suppose is to be expected since it was done by a completely different studio. But most of the levels are pretty much linear, except when, for instance, it sends you off in different directions to gather a bunch of keycars to get through a series of doors that are placed one after another. Or the times I'm wandering around for ages having absolutely no idea where I'm supposed to be going. And I'm pretty sure more than once I accidentally broke the game by going ways I wasn't supposed to go, just because I happened to still have the jetpack from the first level. And then there's this. I don't even know what this is. Some, some kind of bell, or a floating pipe, or something? Either way, it's probably not the best choice to draw my attention skyward to notice all of your broken texture work. And then there's this long tube in the ground that you'll eventually jump down, because there's nothing else around. And why not? It's only a four or five story drop. At the bottom of the tube, there's a group of monsters and a bunch of other tubes for you to jump down. Long story short, this is a pseudo-puzzle where you have to jump down the correct series of tubes. Insert joke about the internet being a series of tubes here. If you get it right, you're dropped down into another group of enemies and another group of tubes to choose between, rinse and repeat another four times. 
but if you get it wrong, you get to go back up and try again. This is made all the more frustrating due to the lack of any sorts of landmarks at all to judge your direction to know which tubes you've already jumped down and which one to try next. I mean, you can even still see the sky after jumping down each level. I ended up having to strategically kill my enemies in such a way that I could use them as landmarks to know which directions I'd already tried. Also, each of these falls is in fact far enough to cause you a decent amount of damage, so it's entirely possible to die from this challenge without any aid from the aliens you're fighting. So, sometime later, after much trial and error, Duke finally reaches the bottom, and... it... is that... is that Mario? Oh, so then those were a series of warp pipes. That makes a little more sense, I guess. Doesn't really excuse the poor execution, though. Or explain why they're at the North Pole. So, why is Mario hanging out here at the North Pole, half a mile underground? Playing Mario Kart! Duh. At least I think it's Mario. Or, well, it's at least the back of Mario's head. Mario! Mario! Man, he really does not want to associate with Duke, does he? And man, is he skilled to be playing the game while facing away from the screen! Also, what is that TV plugged into? And why is Mario down here? And why isn't he freezing? And how do these warp pipes work in the Duke Nukem universe? I have so many questions! I know Easter eggs aren't normally supposed to make all that much sense, but this one was kind of force-fed to you, since this is one of the directions you're forced to go to find this keycard that Mario just happens to be hanging out with for some reason. So if that direction was just a giant referencey Easter egg thing, then what's this other way? Oh yes, this looks inviting. Well, whatever it is, I'm sure Duke can handle it. Forward, into the breach! Huh, why does this place look familiar? Oh. Oh no. Ah! Get away, get away, get away! Hey, 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 hey! Ah, run away! <clears throat> I mean, uh, well, manly noises! Ah! Well, I really thought Duke could handle anything, but in this case, I really think he's doomed. You see? Because it's called Duke... D I'm sorry. Admittedly, though, at least this side trip was a bit cooler than the Mario one, if not just as confusing. So, after blasting your way through wave after wave of enemies in frozen wastelands, Santa's workshop, and L.A. for some reason, you finally reach it! The end of the tunnel! We found Santa's hiding spot! And, uh, wh what is this? Oh. Oh no. So you have found my secret plans. Now you must die. Santa? Santa? Oh no, why? And so begins a battle of the ages. Duke Nukem against the big man himself, Santa Claus. That's wrong. And let me just tell you right now, Santa's a beast. The guy takes dozens of rockets to the face and doesn't even flinch. All he says is... Oh, it's not nice to shoot Santa. <laughs> Okay, that, that was kind of cute. This one took me quite a few tries to complete. Luckily, if you've got a keen eye and notice this convenient piñata, which has absolutely nothing to do with Christmas and confuses me as to why Santa has it in his secret plan-making workshop, but you can blow it up for a shower of glorious goodies that just happen to be perfect for this specific situation. And I have no idea how it contained all that stuff, but I don't care, it's beautiful. But sadly, in the end, our favorite chuckling bowl of jelly is just too powerful, and the only way to stop his plans of world domination is to blow him into jiggling piles of figgy pudding. Oh, my face. How very tragic. The world will just never be the same. But don't worry, the instant that's over, we see Santa riding off into the sky to deliver Christmas presents and thanking Duke for saving Christmas. I, uh, uh, sure, why not? We'll just ignore that whole exploding thing. There's also about 15 seconds of Creepy Frosty here giving a nice little wrap-up that for some reason didn't show up until my third time finishing the game, but we'll just ignore that, because... So that was Duke Nukem Nuclear Winter. Not exactly the best game in the franchise, but if you're hard up for some Yuletide action, it's a harmless little game where you shoot Santa Claus in the face with a rocket launcher. But it is some pretty decent old-school shooter action if that's what you're looking for. And with its digital re-release, you can get this stupidly cheap along with its other fellow expansions and the original Duke Nukem 3D if you'd like to have a little piece of old gaming history. Well, that's it for me. So, uh, hope you enjoyed, and until next time, consider yourselves informed. Why am I staring at a blank screen?
Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey! Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh.